Hello and welcome back to Vintage Story. Today, uh, well, I'm still pursuing the the very um, scarce resource, apparently, of tin and other things like bauxite, lime, um, salt, you know, all, all manner of things underground. Um, they all elude me. But uh, in the meantime, I'm getting a lot of other odds and ends done around the house as well as um, in the fields. And, uh, you know, winter is, you know, right around the corner. I'm pretty sure this episode marks a transition from uh, fall uh, directly into winter. So enjoy that. You might even see the transition happen slowly throughout this episode. But in the meantime, you'll see me collect a few things like some berry bushes. The plan is eventually to have a, a specific, like, greenhouse that is dedicated to berry bushes so that I can maybe um, harvest them all year long. I don't actually know if that's something I can do, so please let me know maybe in the comments if, if that's something I can do. Uh, I may look up in my own time as well. So I am uh, basically looking in, into these caverns. They are hopefully the best way to find some resources. I may have to uh, stop relying on the <clears throat> kind of uh, to topiary um, search function of the uh, prospector's pickaxe. It uh, it seems to, you know it gives you things like oh two percent on bismuthite. So you 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 know I kind of like tend to disregard them. Like okay, well this zone is dead to me. But I might end up finding more resources if I stay a bit more dedicated to it and uh, just use the node search uh, function in order to find it. Um, but you'll find we're gonna we're gonna see something pretty funny today um, in my pursuit of tin, which has it really just eluded me um, forever. I uh, like I can't seem to find it. But I also get a bit more a little bit more bold. Uh, you may have r recalled in the beginning or near the beginning of this series, I was a bit um, I don't know, a little, little bit a little bit scared to go into the the caves. I didn't really want to have to fight anything but I also had uh, more severe penalties for death so um, me turning those penalties off allows me to be a bit more bold when searching for materials so I am ultimately glad I did turn those off and hey we found some saltpeter like I mentioned uh, saltpeter is going to be very helpful for farming but <clears throat> in case you missed it basically saltpeter makes up the other half of the required nutrients that soil needs in order to make some really healthy crops so saltpeter is very helpful it is also technically helpful for making explosives but i don't think i'm really going to get into that they are really expensive and i don't think that they're really worth it compared to just mining i'm not sure why they're in the game but i guess uh oh well, i guess this is me dying to the wolf again uh i i suppose the devs figured if they were going to put saltpeter in the game for the sake of um you know fertilizing crops then we better allow players to make bombs because everyone knows that saltpeter is what you make explosives with but anyway um we i get into a little bit making making rope ladders rope ladders i don't know what uh you know like i've played a lot of modded minecraft and something in me told me that rope ladders were going to be very useful for uh, spelunking and I was not wrong um, you can actually use them to uh, kind of like create uh, you, you can basically place them downwards if that makes sense like if you place them um, you know it, it, it places at, at the bottom first of, of the full ladder so it means you can like climb down things a bit more easily here's me I'm trying to I'm you know s slowly burn um, uh, baking these shing uh, shingles, shingles, shingles. Yeah, baking these shingles. Uh, this is a going to be a long process, but you know, I have to do do it a little bit every day, and eventually, uh, it it will be done. It'll be done before we know it. Uh, I love I love that kind of iterative process in in vintage story. Getting back to uh, saltpeter and digging for resources. Uh, saltpeter is a pretty good find, but ultimately, we still really want to find things like lime. And uh, or bauxite, uh, I believe, is <clears throat> uh, the better better one, or maybe just serves the same function. Um, and of course, we want to find tin. But 
Um, I'm still a little bit new to using the prospect prospector's pickaxe. I will get used to it. I have looked up a bit of t uh, tutelage tutorials uh, to uh, to try and figure out how how best to use it and how uh, how to sort of figure out what it's telling you. And there it is subtle. Um, I will say it is subtle, but um, once you recognize the signs of uh, minerals, it, it's it's actually a little bit it's a lot more intuitive than you might think. So I don't know. I guess every episode I'm going to be doing some metalworking and smithing, and I, as I say, I'm refining this workshop uh, and the flow of things. So I figure, you know, I may as well have my hammer right above the anvil. It looks nice, and it also serves a function. And you know, that's that's my ultimately my style. As I want uh, form and function to shake hands in that regard. But I uh, figure I need a new um, sword. I broke my sword um, in that last cave spelunk and so you, I, got, I need to replace it but luckily I don't have to um, I, I don't have to do like smelting and and uh, using a mold to make my sword I can do some metal working and smithing so that works a lot better um, and I really I do like this um, you know like the the subtle kind of progression in how you do things in Vintage Story is quite nice. You do save a couple of steps, not a lot, but a few. And then eventually, once I start um, building our windmill and uh, having automation uh, as, a, as an option, then things will really start to speed up and I'll be able to do some really uh, easy things like, you know, basically make iron ingots without having to do any smelting and uh, it'll be very quick, fast on a windy day. So, um, refining the cellar here and there. Um, this cellar, uh, spoiler alert, completely changes in the next episode. But, uh, you know, I figure, you know, improving things here and there by little little bits. It's, it's not really uh, groundbreaking. It's not world-changing, but it is slight improvements. I have uh, been making a note to include every time I go to sleep, by the way so that you have a general sense of the passing of time, like how many days has it been since I started this series. I don't think I've ca caught every single one, but I've mostly caught every one, so you could actually keep an eye on like how many days has passed in game, which I think is fun, but uh, I don't know if it's necessarily interesting to anyone. I know that wolf, I don't know, they, they fell down into this hole and I really just wanted to take care of them as quickly as possible. And you'll notice, like, every time a wolf is about to attack you, it does that howl. They run away as soon as they know they're about to die, but that's when you gotta chase them down, because that means they have no time to recover. And this was a particularly frustrating moment because I was trying to uh, claim my resources. Fat is a particularly important uh, resource luckily there was no fat and i just caught that but i was really struggling with the ui there both both the wolf inventory as well as my character um screen kind of popped up when i didn't want it to and uh it gen genuinely led to my death um but you know that was a part part and parcel uh the game showing me things i didn't want to see and also me just panicking because there's a lot of stuff going on but I guess I'll, I don't know if who I credit that kill for, either the wolf or the dwellers, but I generally give it more, mostly to the, the wolf. So here we are again. We we know this, I know this feeling well as uh, trying to find tin. And I keep seeing, you know, no native copper, 20% or 30% absolute, like very good high yield of copper, but I don't want copper. I want tin. So we can finally pull ourselves out of this, um, you know, copper age into something a bit more industrial. But it, it proves to be a challenge. However, we do eventually, we do here find minuscule amounts of cassiterite, which is tin. Um, and I don't know if this is when I, I get really close at some point to finding tin, but I think in this point I was just like sort of give up, gave up and like, oh, minuscule amounts, not worth it. I'll just take what I see, um, which is the brown coal. 
Brown coal, I don't yet know how I'm going to use it. I don't know how I'm supposed to um, fit it into my process. So right for now, I've just been kind of collecting it and uh, calling it a day. Black coal is the next stage up, and that is a, what we need to make steel, I believe. But I can't even mine that. Black coal actually requires like iron and even possibly like meteoric iron tools to uh, craft or uh, uh, mine. So not there yet. I do, uh, I, I won't spoil it, but I do get some black coal, I think in the next episode, but that's that's a particularly significant event, so I won't, I won't spoil that. I was really kind of sad that I couldn't find anything useful in this zone because I just thought it would be such a nice zone to turn into a mine, which is a typical human thinking. Oh, look at this really beautiful little area. That would be great to turn into a nasty mining shaft. Uh, you know, let's just like strip mine this beautiful landscape. That would be just, just top tier. Um, yeah, see, there is politics in your vintage story playthrough. I think rightfully so, in a way. But, anyway, this is a particularly interesting... I, I, you know, I like to, if I see a platform like that, dig it up or, you know, break it right away so that I don't have to deal with it later. And it can be a little bit useful. Um, wasn't particularly in this case, but, you know, it can be. Just to like kind of even out the the descent downwards and give you more things to jump down on. I don't know. It uh, it can be good. I just kind of like looking at it to be honest. Um, when you you step on a like a big old platform of sand and watch it all cascade downwards into a cave or cavern. Oh yeah, here it is. Yeah, I look. I found some quartz and then it get absolutely destroyed by three wolves. Three wolves are just like happened to pop up there. That was like truly day ruining event there. We gotta we gotta do our medial tasks, grinding bones, make sure we grind them up mostly to save on inventory space. I guess I could just keep them as bones, but I'm gonna have to grind them eventually anyway. And it will be useful for um, our our uh, greenhouses once we get those up. So you know it's a, it's an important task. Not necessarily a priority, but, you know, got to do it at some point. This farm, I believe, is uh, officially donezo in the next episode because it is officially winter time um, and and cold enough that the crops just die. They don't even... Uh, that right now, they give you, like, growth stunted because it's cold, but in the next episode, they just, like, straight up are dead um, because it's way too cold. So, good to know. Um, I don't... Like, I, I don't really know the process of Vintage Story. I don't know how harsh things get. So um, seeing these things happen in real time is, is kind of interesting. And it means you have to adapt to the moment-by-moment -moment, uh, circumstance rather than, like, you know... Uh, I guess the smart thing would be to plan against it, but it's, it's just not... Uh, <laughs> I'm not doing that, I suppose. I'm just trying to trying to stay on my toes. Still looking for that Cassiderite. There it is, minuscule amounts of Cassiderite, not not anything else. Oh yeah, and then we get destroyed by, I think this is maybe the same three wolves? There's a pile of wolves out there, and it's a real problem. Is this the same zone? I'm, I'm, it, I don't know, these caverns start to blend together a little bit. But there they are, there I am uh, actually making use of the rope ladders. But then, oh yeah, this is great. Oh, I finally figured out, and then I accidentally jump off. Classic, classic mistake of not understanding how to <laughs> how to climb down a ladder, and so I just jump off. Love that. That is really, really top tier. That's a classic Half-Life moment right there. Anyone who's played the original Half-Life will know exactly what I'm talking about. Or I guess any like old single uh, first-person shooter at this point. So. Um, I found a cavern. It, is there anything good in there? Uh, you know, like I'm exploring. There it is. Considerate. Verified trace amounts. That is with the um, the node search function, by the way. So that means there's within eight blocks in all directions, there is uh, a small amount of Considerate, which is really important. So we know that there's actually tin nearby. And so I, I go searching and I, I'm digging around and I'm trying to find it. And uh, we can see, see there, Considerate, verified small amounts. Now, 
at the time of recording this, I don't yet understand what is happening. Uh, what we've just confirmed is that there were verified trace amounts and now there are verified small amounts, which means I'm actually moving in the correct direction. Now we can see there um, verified trace amounts again. We know I'm moving away from it. And there again, we found um, no amount. So we know we're moving farther away from it. But this is all very good and useful information, but I don't recognize it as such at the time because I don't really know how the prospect prospector's pickaxe works. So, you know, I'm digging and it, look, look, there it is again, verified small amounts. So I know now that I was heading in the right direction and, you know, I'm digging and I'm digging and I'm trying, uh, like, this is really like the equivalent of like trying to figure out something while like being completely blind. And then here's the magic moment right here. Check this out. Verified medium amounts. I'm pretty certain if I had kept digging in that specific direction, I would have come across tin because basically the field of discovery um, for the prospector's pickaxe was catching more and more tin. So but basically the way the prospector's pickaxe, at least in node mode, um, the way it works is it catches, if it, if it, like imagine basically an eight by eight by eight um, cube and the prospector's pickaxe is in the center of it, it'll catch um, basically the tip of a disc of, of minerals at the edge of it. No matter how big that disc of minerals is, if it only catches a tiny amount of the resources inside that um, 8x8x8, by eight by eight, then it's only going to display a trace amount. But if you head into the right direction, and catch more of that disc inside that range, then it'll display small amounts or medium amounts, or if you're very lucky, large amounts. So you, based on that information, can find out if you're heading in the right direction because it's catching more and more of that deposit in its field of discovery. So, um, you know, I, I first saw a trace and then I saw a small, and then just before I stopped looking, I saw a medium. But I've marked the location of that. Um, on, like I, you know, I'll pay close attention while I'm editing, and I'll, I'll uh, n note things in my in my little journal, um, which you know makes officially makes me a bully worthy. Um, and I noted the coordinates down that uh, I was actually very close to finding tin. So uh, funny enough, just just kind of making this series, and uh, you know uploading it. It was enough to improve my, my play because I'm forced to look at my actions and uh, pay closer attention, including landmark decisions like this, which I've already learned my lesson, but I've decided to make mistakes multiple times, which is to uh, <laughs> squeeze berries. The last of the berries, mind you. Like these, this is really the last berry yield ever um, without a bucket underneath. Luckily, I caught it just in time, and I didn't waste the entire yield of juice, but it's still, um, you know, absolutely, absolutely the, just the worst mistakes happening here. And, of course, like, you know, I'm also, like, had to get rid of the water in the bucket because I was using it for something. I don't know. And I realized I don't even have that um, kind of berry type being stored, so I have to make a new barrel and uh you know so i can i can store it away and we see snow for the first time i'm pretty sure that's the first time we've seen snow which is uh kind of a big deal maybe not but i do really enjoy the weather effects in vintage story it uh, really makes a big difference to the level of immersion uh and again like i don't necessarily like to compare or just poop on Minecraft. Here we go. In case you missed it the first 17 times, here's me dying to three wolves. Um, but compared to the weather effects in Minecraft, I really do have to say I prefer them in Vintage Story. Um, and, you know, like, I guess you see one hole in the ground, you basically see them all. Uh, but here's another one all the same, and me trying my best to descend it without dying. And in this case, I'm also having to fend off dwellers who are chucking rocks at me. 
which blessed them for for trying you know this was a really interesting one because there's just like a bunch of dead animals at the bottom i don't know if maybe they just like accidentally fell down this hole and died from fall damage but unfortunately i think i end up dying here and not able to uh yeah yeah there's another no, one more dweller and they they actually get me with a rock i'm pretty sure nope no they punched me but you know, there's a, there's another death. I don't know how many. I should have been keeping a death tally. I pretty much keep every single death ever, so I guess we could keep a death tally, but it's not really something I want to keep. I guess it would be interesting to do so. But So this is an interesting area. First of all, there are boars here, which uh, I haven't really encountered up until now. And there were a lot of crop resources, like a ton of crops, as well as this merchant. And this is the merchant that I, uh, ten, I do some business with because they have a lot of um, clothing, not particularly great clothing, but clothing all the same. And it's, it is warmer than what we've got. What we've got isn't just bad, but it's also worn out. So it provides basically no protection against the elements. Um, so as I... Uh, discover certain things in this area and get some more currency i will be spending it on clothing because i mean there are better things to spend them on but i figured that's good enough and i find this cavern with yet more brown coal there's a lot of brown coal i have a lot of uh that in surplus so when eventually i will need it then you know i will not be in i will not be lacking for brown coal which is good i suppose but I would trade a little bit for it, um, a little bit of it for uh, some tin. But I, I've, I've kept a lot of this, like, me collecting crops. And even, like, to the extent of uh, throwing things away to keep all the crops. Because it's just, like, an absurd amount of crops. And I may, I don't know, I guess I just haven't been seeing them until now because um, they were very much the same color as the grass. But now that it's become winter... I feel like this is something that may change in the future because it feels a little bit exploitative that like when you're, you know, you wait till winter and then you can easily see all the crops because they're now completely contrasting with the landscape. Seems a little bit unfair, but uh, I'm not complaining um, so much as just remarking that, you know, is, is realistic and um, like, I guess, difficult as vintage story can be as uh punishing in terms of like surviving the elements is sometimes sometimes there is the occasional uh, exploit it almost feels like to uh to shortcut around some of the survival elements like for instance uh trapping animals in a hole but i, th I don't know what my decision making was here i think it was like i'm probably going to die so i may as well get go as deep as i um want and collect the resources which I suppose is the first example um, of me like using my very small punishment system in order to, uh, you know, get some extra resources. You're you can totally uh, take it up with me in the comments, I suppose, if you want, but it won't really change much. So I guess uh, my request is always to keep things civil. Um, I don't know what happened here. I guess I was trying to get some resources from these dwellers, and there's a corrupted dweller there that decides to throw chuck a rock at me and that's enough to kill me dead still working on the greenhouse that is a, a long-term process but it's you know here and there it's it's you know getting getting pretty complete now and uh, probably not in the next episode but in the one after that we'll start to actually see it take shape which is exciting gotta do gotta do our medial task turning um grain into flour and i'm uh, I make a couple of mistakes in terms of pres preservation, but for the most part, I am trying to keep uh, our grains as flour until basically I have enough um, materials to make uh, pies with. And I think pies are basically my preferred form of uh, food because they're they're kind of easy, an easy way to um, just like throw all of our food into one source and. Uh, and it's also, they're stackable, so they're easy to take with you, and it's enough food and um, calories to kind of keep you through the day. So I, I like pies as a form of uh, keeping your dude fed. So uh, that's 
that's what I'm going to be doing, and it means we can keep um, basically half of the required resources as grain, which, like, keeps for years, like actual years in game. So, like, it, I never have to worry about it spoiling. The only thing I have to worry about spoiling are the berries or the meat. Um, so, you know, when we have enough berries or meat that it justifies making some pies, then we have the flour when we need it, which is nice. So here's your temporal storm. I've tried to keep a bit more of the effect as was requested by one of my viewers. As I said, it, they're not really that exciting. There's just a lot of monsters being spawned outside. Uh, I don't really plan on going outside to see what that looks like, but um, I guess I could. It's, I, guess, I don't know. It's not something I, I would tend to do. I, I want to take advantage of these moments by getting some extra chores done around the house. Um, so here we are turning, this is, I don't know, kind of technically a mistake, I'm, I'm turning my flour into dough, which is exactly what I said I shouldn't do, but um, I, I guess my justification was I have enough resources to make some pies. I had quite a lot of turnips that I had collected in the wild, and a bit of parsnip so we could make some mixed vegetable pies, which just look really cool. I like them. I don't know. I get excited about uh, really lame stuff like that i guess and uh the the little touches and details in vintage story just you know they tickle me you know i i appreciate them so um yeah there's some really the the, the nasties in vintage story ramp up over time so we have like corrupted dwellers outside that could basically take you out with one or two punches and especially since i have no armor to speak of which is something i probably should fix but don't really plan on it my uh, my high score, by the way, I, I tend to burn or ruin at least one pie every single time I decide to make pies. I tend to make four or five-ish pies, and I think at this point I've figured out that the most number, like the highest number of pies you can make while the oven is still hot, hot enough to bake is about four. So if I want to make more than like four pies, then basically I should have a second oven on the go. Which, you know, I think that there's a justification having more than one oven, but it is uh, a lot of time and clay I have to spend in order to make that happen. Um, still though, I you know, I think the plan is eventually to have a really nice kitchen with all of the resources I need. So I don't think there's anything wrong with having a second oven. But, uh, you know, also, when am I going to be making more than four pies at a time? Four pies is enough to basically feed you for four or five days even. So, you know, uh, I don't really have to make pie for another four or five. <laughs> I don't know. This, this is the episode of pie making, I suppose. So I am like bit by bit refining my process for making shingles and just pie making and there it is there's one pie ruined by accidentally placing it on the floor and i'm still on this version of vintage story where there's a bug uh where once i've placed a baked pie on the ground or on any surface it's impossible to remove it other than cutting it so that kind of sucks not not a big deal oh yeah and this episode is also landmarked by the by the significant event of me almost burning the house down which is pretty fun I decided since I don't really want to go outside and deal with the monsters, I would just um, basically pit kiln our shingles in our basement, in our cellar. Um, seemed like a good idea at the time, and you know what? I stand by it, um, except for the fact that I almost burned the house down. That's that's the only real minor problem with it. Um, you know, should have should have been a bit more careful, but uh, nothing really bad happened. Here's a also another milestone moment. I finally decided to make a bow, which needs to be dried, and I don't really know the best way to dry it. If you want to let me know in the comments what the best way to uh, dry a bow staff is, other than just keeping it in your inventory, uh, that would be super helpful. Also decided to make a scythe because I figure um, getting grass would just be so much easier with that. And I do plan on making uh, clippers at some point so that I can get sticks a bit more easily. Those are two resources which have just been like kind of a huge pain in the butt in claiming. This is so I can, these are the resources I'm collecting right now so I can burn my house down by the way. 
uh, explicitly for that purpose. So we can we can see how I almost do this. And you can see maybe the train wreck happening in slow motion here, which is pretty great as I go and get my torch. And I'm like, yep, th this is this is totally fine. There's absolutely no problem with this at all. And uh, like I say, I you know I play with a friend in in Discord, and they were like, hey, you know, uh, your house is on fire right now. So. <laughs> Um, fortunately I was quick enough that I could chop away at these birch slabs and uh, pretty much salvage any of them. I, I don't think basically any of them just got destroyed. I might be wrong about that, but um, I was able to stop the fire from propagating and uh, stop a disaster from happening. This is, um, I thought, kind of a big deal as well, is finally removing these pit kiln spots outside of our house as well as our shed. I uh, decided to be unceremonious about this because, uh, you know, I thought honestly that our shed, our dirt shack, uh, just kind of ruined a lot of the vibes of our of the cottage. And eventually I do want the cottage to feel nice, like feel like a good place to live in. And the, the dirt shack just wasn't doing it for me. So though I spent quite a lot of episodes holed up in that dirt shack, uh, it had to go and it is now gone and I am officially living exclusively in the cottage although I have been basically for the last few episodes I haven't gone into the dirt shed for any purpose other than like ch testing the um, prospector's pickaxe in the in the in the mine down there the mine got buried under snow which I thought it was kind of hilarious um, so I don't really plan I it didn't even like unbury it because I don't really want to do much more with that um, mine shaft. In fact, it kind of bothers me that it's there in a way. But here, here I am just trying to like kind of pretty up this uh, staircase into our, our cellar. I, there were, I figured it was a little bit lacking. It looked a little bit, I don't know, too too symmetrical, and I uh, wanted it to look a bit nicer and uh, maybe just trim a bit on the staircase leading up which right now goes nowhere because there is no second floor but I figured there would be eventually and uh, spoiler alert I do have a change of heart about the staircase in the next episode basically right away so that goes bye bye um, but it may come back I don't know we'll see how I feel this is a work in process but anyway that's gonna do it for this episode I hope you enjoyed it um, if you did definitely hit that like button and uh, consider subscribing for more content like this. See you guys next time. Take it easy.